It's Sunday morning, it is time to hand my bag in. Morning. Morning. So the idea here is that you drop your bag in uh, and they take it to every different campsite for you. So today, day one, we're gonna take a ferry across the lock. Uh, but this is going straight to Glenfinnan on a van. So if this is the big moment where we find out, because I haven't really weighed this, whether it's under 20 kilos or not. Yeah. Those are nothing missing. No. You would have been told if you were missing. Yeah. Oh my, look at that. I didn't even check it and it's 19.7 <laughs> kilos. <Yes. laughs> Cheers, have a Thank good you. Right, <laughs> that is good. I'm so relieved about that. That's brilliant, 19.7 kilos. Fantastic, okay. And it's only gonna get lighter because I'm gonna eat food on the way. So that's good, right. Another beautiful day again, it's gonna be warm. Uh, we start at 11, or I start at 11 in wave one. So we're here at the, the football club and um, in about an hour or two's time, we're gonna walk from here down to the ferry. The next job I have to do is to bring my van in from the car park here to the site where we're gonna leave it for the rest of the week. You're not funny. I'm gonna put a, a backing track of like some gladiatorial. Yeah, oh yeah, maybe okay, yeah. Gladiatorial music. Oh, this is going to make it in. This will make it in. This is content. <laughs> Let's see what Jay's is. Yeah. Hey. 18.8. Oh. oh, heavier than me. <laughs> heavier than me. See, matches our physique as well. Heavier than me. Oh, well, hang on. What? Yeah. Well done. We've parked up the van for the week. That is it now. We won't see the film My Run van until we have finished the Cape Wrath Ultra. Me and James are just going to walk down to the lock. Uh, we've got a... How long have we got? A couple of hours? Yeah, so the ferry's at 11, isn't it? Yeah. No, 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 no the ferry's at, No, ferry's earlier than that. <laughs> we we start running at 11. <laughs> oh my God, we... This is trouble already. Oh, yes. Hey, Stephen, this is your tracker. Thank you. Just make sure it goes in the very top of your bag. Yeah. And then uh, pointing upwards, yeah. uh, just so it's yeah. inside. Yeah. Um, and if you rearrange your bag each day, just put it back in the same place. Okay. And have you Thank you very much. Can I? I can put it on the outside, can't I? I just. Oh, I'll have a play with it now. Let's see. All right. Thank you very much. Right. So that's my um, that's my tracker. These they're they're quite big, aren't they? But um, actually not quite as heavy as I remember them being. So that's good. Uh, the ferry is here, so we're getting on that right now, going across the lock, and we will start our race in 45 minutes. Cheers, Shane. See you in a bit. This is exciting. Feeling nervous? Feeling quite casual at the moment. Too casual? Too casual. <laughs> When I first heard about the Cape Wrath Ultra back in 2016, the one thing that stuck in my mind was this moment, taking a ferry to the start of the race. I so wanted to be on that ferry one day. It seemed so enigmatic, and as the years have passed, this ethereal ferry journey has become one of the most iconic race starts in ultra running, certainly in the UK. It took eight years, but finally, here I was, crossing Loch Linney to begin a real bucket list adventure. The landing craft set us down on the beach, and the bagpipes beckoned us forward. The historic imagery and resonance really was too much to process, and I was relieved when Steve from the media team stuck his camera in my face. It's like a dream. You know, I've seen this on film for years and that ferry is so iconic coming across the lake there, the lock there. It's just beautiful and it does it kind of doesn't feel like I'm about to do this. <laughs> 
So having got off the ferry, I'm now just walking with everybody to the actual start line. <laughs> Did somebody have to convince you to wear that? I feel, I feel used, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously not. I'm having a great time. Good for you. <laughs> Quite right too. So there's coffee and tea and toilets, biscuits if you want them at the start. We've got half an hour to go before the start of wave one. Having crossed over on the ferry over Loch Linney uh, from the other side of uh, Fort William over there. I don't really need sunglasses on, do I? It's not really sunny, but we're, they're on now. I may as well go with the look. Ready to go? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just slight delay there. You're in for an amazing eight days, you really, really are. And I hope to see all of the light ice at the end of it all. Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Away we go, everybody. Cape Breath Ultra. Okay. 10K on the road to start with. Away we go. At the start of 2024, I'd marked this race as my A race for the year. I was going to give it a real go and my ultimate goal was to finish in the top 20. I then spent the next three months jumping from one illness to the next and not getting in anything like the mileage required to be competitive at any race, let alone a multi-day epic in the Scottish Highlands. Right, that's 5k in, 27, 28 minutes. Um, I've had my first technical malfunction of the day my satellite navigation has fallen out of my backpack so I'm currently carrying it when we get to the turn off at 10k I'll, I'll take my backpack off and put it back in but just want to make the most of the road beautiful day probably gone off too fast but who cares these rhododendron bushes beautiful coming down here fantastic look at that how pretty is that all over both sides of the road we're coming to the end of the road section now so the whole first 10k has been on the road slightly undulating but mostly flat and we're going to turn off right in a minute and start going inland and uphill kilometers 55 minutes we've now turned off the main road but we're still on a, a tarmac path so I don't know when it's going to turn into trail despite my lack of training I'd resolved to still try and be competitive I wanted to view this as a race rather than a running holiday and I wanted to do the best I could to that end, I set off at what I thought was a reasonable pace, fast enough to keep in touch with the leaders, but slow enough so as not to destroy my legs on day one. So we're 16 and a half kilometres in, in one hour, 34 minutes. So that's about halfway. So if we can continue this pace, I'm looking at finishing in around about three hours, 15, maybe three and a half if there's some steep climbs towards the end. I've just walked a couple of hills so far. Most of it is very runnable ground at the moment. Well, this is beautiful. So we're 20K in, about 13K to go. The temperature has increased. Uh, me and Christian here, I'm just beginning to struggle a little in the heat. 
The terrain was certainly runnable for much of the early part of day one. However, it was very warm and we all know what happens to me when the temperature rises. I was already feeling decidedly fatigued. 23 kilometers done on the first day. That means about 10 to go. Feeling the heat now, struggling, definitely slowing down. But there is a bit of a cool breeze and I'm looking forward to filling my water bottles up soon. And this is truly beautiful here. First significant climb of the run. And I went to get my poles out. One of my poles is jammed. I can't yank it out of the socket, out of the quiver. It's very annoying. I don't really want to stop, but I might have to just to get this pole out. Right, about 6k down into Glenfinnan now. We stopped just before Glenfinnan because there's a bridge that's out and we have to get to the bridge and then walk back to get a lift into camp. Um, it's a bit rocky and boggy on the descent here, but um, I'm glad that climb's over. I didn't enjoy that climb very much because it was very hot and I've kind of lost my energy now. <laughs> but yeah, day one, gone all right, I think. Just get down this hill without breaking my leg and we'll be happy. I've been caught by two or three runners as well, so I've definitely slowed down quite a lot. On the descent from the only significant climb of day one, I was trying to hold it together. Trying not to show that I had essentially messed up the first day by going out too hard, not respecting the terrain in the last third of the run, and not adapting my effort to the weather conditions. All rookie errors for someone who should know better. 30.5 kilometres in, we have two kilometres to go to the finish line and we're at the bottom of the hill now, Tarmac Road. I should be running, I've got two guys behind me just about to catch me. Okay, we're just coming into the last 50 metres. We don't actually run into camp because there's a, a bridge which has been down for a long time. So we just have to stop here in this kind of random place. There's the, there's the RF timing chip thing and we're done. It was a shame not to be able to run into camp on the first day. Apparently the bridge has been repaired but it's still not available to use. So it was a long trudge back to where the vans were parked. Oh sorry, 30. Sorry, yeah, I've got it in my pocket because it just kept flapping about, it was annoying me. Well done. Good job. So this is us walking back to the vans and the pickup point to take us to the Glenfinnan camp and runners are just coming back past us into the finish. So we've made it to camp. Gosh that last five miles was really hard work but I'm in tent 14 so this is me with uh, seven other guys and I'm the first one back in our tent so I'm just gonna get myself organized and get down to the river and lie in the water for a bit. Pretty much everyone's finished uh, today's run now. Everyone's in camp, chilling out. It's a beautiful day, so there's, everybody's outside. So you can see people here just sitting down, relaxing. Dinner is now being served, so I'm gonna go and have my dinner any second now. It hasn't been any rain today, but there is plenty of wet gear being dried out. Uh, people have been in the river, you see, after the run today. Um, the info tent is here. You can go and check your messages from friends and family or uh, check what position you finished in today. There are big screens on the wall. Let me go and show you. So 
this is where people are eating their dinner and then you've got the screens here showing that everyone has indeed finished there's the map there and these are the positions for today this is the info point so if anybody's got any questions um, or if they want to check their time their result today or their messages then they can come here and ask here How's it going today, Charlie? Everything all right? Today's been very good. We've had some sunshine. We've been swimming in the rivers. Any disasters? No disasters. No broken legs? No, not yet. Well, that's very disappointing, isn't it, for content purposes? We've done very well. What did I do? 25th place or something? 29th? I, I, something like that. But no, yeah, but I'm very tired though, so I'm going to go slower tomorrow. Right, let's go and get some dinner. vegetable stew today and then uh, vegan sticky toffee pudding for dessert with cream come on are you having chips as well absolutely <laughs> it's all on camera he's got stew and chips it was a beautiful evening in camp under the famous viaduct at Glenfinnan to round off day one Coming up in episode three of the Cape Wrath Ultra. This is a running race. We're supposed to be running, not stopping, taking photos. There's a beautiful scenery. Just over there, there's a group of deer. No ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you do when you come to a stream on a Cape Wrath Ultra. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? This last section has broken my spirit a bit. 